Do you remember the thrill of being a kid? The excitement of discovery? The pure innocence of play? When I think of my childhood, one place stands out. McDonald's. But not for the food, for the toys. There was something magical about going to McDonald's and getting the latest Happy Meal promotion. I vividly remember watching the ads and relentlessly asking my mom to take me there. However, the reality of Happy Meal toys was often fleeting. They'd captivate your imagination for a few hours only to end up forgotten in a box. They were essentially tying gimmicks to promote a movie, show, or video games. However, McDonald's occasionally struck gold with Happy Meal toys, like the time they included actual Lego sets. But this magical era eventually came to an end. So what happened? Let's dive in. Chapter 1 the early days. During the late 70s, McDonald's faced the challenge of making itself relevant to kids. Enter the Happy Meal. Introduced in 1979, it was McDonald's response to Burger Chef menu, which was quickly gaining popularity with children, and the Happy Meal was a massive success. But in 1982, McDonald's faced a little hiccup. They partnered up with Playmobil for Happy Meal toys, but unfortunately, they didn't quite think it through. These Playmobil toys turned out to be choking hazards for toddlers, which was a problem. In 1993, McDonald's decided to make things right and introduced a new line of Happy Meal toys specially designed for kids under the age of 3. This time, they teamed up with LEGO to release four sets of Duplo bricks. These sets included four 2x2 Duplo bricks and one 2x4 brick, with no exclusive printing. It seems to me these products were probably rushed into production, but it worked out well because LEGO probably had a surplus of Duplo bricks, so they were able to get these products out quickly. Fast forward to 1985 and McDonald's decided to add some excitement to their Happy Meal toys by introducing LEGO system sets. These, just like the Duplo promotion, didn't have any special printing or unique designs. They were basically poly bags that LEGO used to promote their larger sets. When you bought one, you'd find a special offer inside. In 1986, the same concept continued. The sets featured simple vehicles like cars, planes, helicopters, and boats, all with the promise of a special offer tucked inside the poly bag. But strangely, for the next two years, we didn't see any new sets. It wasn't until 1989 when we got a fresh wave of eight poly bags. These were more of the same, offering cars, planes, boats, and helicopters. However, something cool was added. You could get two different versions of each model, which added some variety. Now, while today we might see these as simple throwaway products, they might have been the first introduction to LEGO for many kids in the 80s. Moving over to 1994, McDonald's and LEGO partnered up once again. But surprise, surprise, it was just a re-release of half of the 1989 wave. Why, you ask? I couldn't really find clear information, but my guess is that there might have been a manufacturing problem and McDonald's needed toys by a certain date and LEGO was the only one who could produce them in time. But as they say, your guess is as good as mine. Now let's jump all the way to 1999. This year marked the return of LEGO and McDonald's partnership, and it was a lot cooler. There were two waves, one for a regular system and one for Duplo. The system sets, well, they were more the same. Planes, cars, helicopters, and boats. However, for the first time up to this point, LEGO created special printed bricks featuring McDonald's mascots. But if I'm being honest, they served their purpose, but the Duplo sets? Oh, they were fantastic! Surprisingly packed with personality and character, something you wouldn't typically expect from Duplo Happy Meal toys. But that was just the beginning of what was to come in the years that followed. Before you continue, if you're enjoying the series and want to support the channel, please consider subscribing and dropping a like if you haven't. It really helps me out a lot. Anyways, back to the video. Chapter 2. The Highs and Lows Moving over to 2001, things got really interesting. In the late 90s, LEGO was facing financial struggles. They were creating great products, but kids weren't as interested. So LEGO came up with Bionicle, a new multimedia brand designed to offer kids and teens a deeper narrative through toys, games, and books. This is where McDonald's Happy Meal promotions came into play. Meet the Tahanga, Huki, Onepu, Matoro, Kongu, Maku, and Jala. These characters were made up of eight parts, and although they were essentially the same set in different colors, they included an exclusive colored mask. What made these cool was that they were real Lego pieces. They were Bionicle sets, and the characters this promotion introduced would later become significant in the storyline, like Matoro and Jala. It was a smart move because they were probably designed as individual sets, but putting them in Happy Meals at the time exposed the brand to thousands of kids. And 
Was the product any good? I was able to buy Jala sealed and honestly, the Tahunga are so cool. They have a disc throwing feature and they complement the retail set perfectly. But they're definitely overpriced. In 2002, LEGO stumbled because they needed another big win after Bionicle's success in 2001. But instead, they came up with Galador, a theme that aimed to be huge, just like Bionicle. However, it turned out to be a flop. The Happy Meal promotion that went with Galador reflected that. Up to this point, LEGO had designed and manufactured all of their Happy Meal promotions. But in 2002 for Galador, LEGO decided to have a third-party manufacturer in China make the product. I managed to get my hands on two of these, and they're not great. For example, LEGO used the Bionicle promotion as a platform to promote Bionicle and expand the world with new characters. But these Galador toys didn't have that synergy with the retail line. They were just smaller, cheaper versions of the products on shelves. And their main gimmick was mixing and matching them with other characters. But aside from that, these didn't do anything. So you couldn't cross them over with the main line, which was disappointing. However, McDonald's did make another Happy Meal promotion in 2002, but not what you expect. See, in 2001, in response to Burger King's Big Kids Meal, McDonald's introduced the Mighty Kids Meal, a variant of the Happy Meal for older kids who had outgrown the traditional version but still wanted a free treat. So Lego and McDonald's released Bionicle Trading Cards. And they did their job. Nothing extraordinary, but they were a nice collectible for Bionicle fans to play with. Sadly, they've been forgotten by time, but they're still relatively cheap and easy to find on eBay if you're interested. So in 2002, LEGO Happy Meal promotions were quite underwhelming, but could things improve in the future? Fast forward to 2004, and LEGO and McDonald's joined forces once more, and they came up with two new promotions, one aimed for boys using their sports theme, and one for girls using the Clickets theme. Clickets, for those of you who don't know, was a quirky stud-based accessory line that LEGO launched in 2003. And much like the trend Galador started in 2002, these weren't directly made by LEGO. They were made in China for LEGO. However, these were technically compatible with LEGO sets. On the Clickets side, these were seven unique items and they aimed to fit in with the mainline Clickets brand, serving as additional products girls could add to their Clickets collection. For the boys, there were eight figures, including two basketball players, two hockey players, a skateboarder, a snowboarder, and a soccer player. They mostly shared the same molds, with a fixed head on the top half and a spring in the bottom half, but each had something unique, like a hand, a leg, a hockey stick, or a skateboard. The main gimmick was that pressing down on the head would trigger a cool action feature. While these didn't look like the mainline sports brand, they were more of their own unique LEGO compatible figures. And while they might not be for everyone, they were an interesting way to add play to the sports line through a Happy Meal promotion. So I gotta give them props for that. Fast forward to 2006, where the plot thickens. LEGO fans had long been yearning for more Bionicle-themed Happy Meal promotions, and their prayers were answered after five-year hiatus. The Bionicle, Toa, Naika, and Paraka burst onto the scene. However, these toys took a somewhat unexpected turn, which some fans refer to as cheap plastic bastardizations. Unlike their more intricate shelf counterparts, these Happy Meal versions were smaller and less articulated, and only half of the Toa and Paraka were featured in this promotion. Still, there was a glimmer of coolness to these toys. Just like their larger Anika counterparts, these Happy Meal toys also boasted light-up swords, and the Paraka had light-piping eyes. In 2007, Bionicle returned to the Happy Meal showcasing the Toa Mari and Baraki. While they followed a similar pattern as the previous year with smaller, less articulate versions of the retail sets, this time there was a higher degree of mold variation. These figures introduced a more dynamic look, injecting some freshness into the collection. Their gimmick, however, shifted to small plastic discs, and one could only hope they didn't go missing. For 2008, the story repeated itself. Once more, the Happy Meal promotion depicted the Fantoka and Mystica waves of Bionicle, maintaining the pattern of four heroes and four villains. While they did show improvements in terms of dynamic poses and actual projectiles this time around, but it couldn't quite recapture the magic that the Tahunga brought seven years earlier. But here's the twist. I genuinely love these figures. Let me explain. I was four when these Happy Meal promotions started. My family had just moved to the United States and I have vivid memories of watching the commercials for the Paraka and Toa and Naika on TV. These figures stared an irresistible fascination in me. 
yet my parents hesitated to purchase them due to the ages 7 and 16 label on the boxes. Happy Meal toys, though, are free from age restrictions, so these became my gateway into the Bionicle world, and I eagerly awaited each new release. While I was too young to fully enjoy Bionicle when it was first releasing, these toys were my personal connection to Bionicle. And from my perspective, that's what these did well. They provided younger kids a way to follow the story and play in the sandbox that was Bionicle. But that wasn't all for 2008, as McDonald's released another tie-in promotion, now featuring characters and vehicles from the newly released LEGO Batman video game. These were four figures of iconic characters like Batman, Robin, Joker, and Mr. Freeze, and other four toys were mini vehicles of the Bat Boat, the Batmobile, Joker's helicopter, and the Penguin Sub. However, there was a distinct shift in these Happy Meal toys. They felt more like your traditional Happy Meal promotion, with each having a simple gimmick, and that's about it. This was a departure from the previous LEGO promotions, and from what I could find, fans were not happy. Up until this point, LEGO had made genuine efforts to ensure their Happy Meal promotions resembled the products. With the Bionicle line, for example, the toys felt like smaller versions of the actual characters, making them ideal for smaller kids to play with. But in the case of the LEGO Batman Happy Meal toys, these came across as gimmicky items. They were something to fiddle with briefly while you were at the restaurant. But once you got home, they really didn't inspire extended play. And I can vouch for this from my personal experience because I even forgot I had one of these. It's clear that these particularly miss the mark in terms of capturing the essence of LEGO and engaging with kids in some ways earlier promotions had. But the story doesn't end here and there's still one more up before it all went down. When 2009 came around, after four consecutive years without Happy Meal promotions that were fully compatible with LEGO, a glimmer of hope appeared. Enter LEGO Racers a series of eight cars, each constructed from three large pieces adorned with stickers. These cars were an absolute delight. Simple enough for children to enjoy and mix and match, yet these carry the essence of what made the LEGO system special. Despite these being made in China and feeling of a lesser quality to traditional LEGO sets, I adore these. Regrettably, the story takes a somber turn from here. Chapter 3 the downfall. In 2010, San Francisco made a bold move by banning Happy Meals in an attempt to encourage McDonald's to offer healthier meal options. To get around this, McDonald's added a clever twist. They started charging an extra 10 cents for each toy. However, a new trend was on the horizon. Kids were becoming less interested in physical toys, and in 2013, most kids had shifted their attention to mobile apps. McDonald's noticed this shift and decided to take a similar path they launched the McPlay Power App, which allowed kids to scan QR codes that came with their Happy Meals and play games. In 2014, for the release of the LEGO Movie, McDonald's released eight Power Cups. These lenticular cups aimed to promote the movie, but left many questioning their appeal and relevance. As the years rolled on, Happy Meal promotions continued down a path that diverged from the original essence of LEGO. In 2017, with the LEGO Batman Movie, spawned a variety of products including Puzzles, 3D view sets, metal bookmarks, and cups featuring Batman, Batgirl, Robin, and various villains. Later in the year, with the release of the LEGO Ninjago movie, it was the same thing. More weird gimmicky toys, cups, and notebooks. These technically qualify as tie-in toys, but they didn't quite resonate with diehard LEGO fans. By 2019, it was evident that the day of genuine LEGO products in Happy Meals was over. With the LEGO Movie 2, it wasn't as bad as the previous three promotions, now getting an assortment of activity cases to collect, each containing different puzzles and LEGO graphical items. And this is where the story ends. In retrospect, one can't help but ponder what went wrong. LEGO initially laid a brilliant foundation with its Ahunga promotion, exemplifying the concept of offering sets through Happy Meals, and it helped LEGO connect with kids outside of toy stores. But as LEGO grew to the company it is today, it doesn't really need McDonald's anymore. In the early days of LEGO Happy Meal promotions, LEGO was still growing and experimenting. Now, they've found more efficient ways to market their products. And as cool as I think the Tahunga are, there is an argument that making exclusive products for McDonald's handicap future fans. As once the promotion was over, they stopped producing them. 
and the sets became rare and expensive. And now new fans discovering Bionicle for the first time probably won't be able to get their hands on these due to the rareness. In the end, the LEGO Happy Meal promotions had a captivating start, a thrilling middle, and a somewhat disheartening end. While the future at the moment is unclear, for some like myself, it doesn't really matter. Those LEGO Happy Meal toys were nothing sort of magical. They will always remain a nostalgic reminder of our childhood. But hey, that's just my break opinion. Thanks for watching and take care.